Happy VCR Day! I'm sure it's been a very long time since you've thought about the Noble VCR, let alone even seen one, unless you tripped on the VCR you've been storing in your basement just in case you need it someday. No doubt there are many people who visit our page who never learned the virtue of Be Kind, Rewind. VCR Day comes each year to remind us to take some time to appreciate the nostalgia of tech of yesteryear. From family holidays to weddings and funerals, everything was recorded and then re recorded over to those book-sized cassettes. And the greatest cause of stress between 1983 and 1998 was figuring out how to program the damn thing to record a program on TV so you didn't have to wait for the rerun. It's also a great reminder for us all that we are that we ourselves do not stand still in time. Just as our viewing pleasure has evolved from video cassette to DVD to streaming, you too must evolve. Just like the VCR, you too are aging, but that doesn't mean you need to become obsolete and become consigned to the back corner of a thrift shop. This may sound trite, but whatever worked for you when you were watching Goonies on Betamax won't work for you now when you're watching Tiger King on your phone. You are fundamentally a different person today. Your mental, physical, and spiritual needs have changed, and you need to update what you're doing to address them. Whether that's changing your diet, amending your exercise routine, adding more stretching, building better relationships with your oldest friends or family, getting more involved in your church or community, or starting to do all the things you said you never had time to before. Hopefully, whatever you are doing in your younger years has made sure you're in a good place today but you should still always be trying new things now to make sure your future self is in a great place too. This may start with getting a physical to find problem areas with your health or hiring a trainer to find weak points and refresh your routine or checking in with a therapist, pastor, or joining a support group to help you sort out whatever's going on inside. Everyone has something they can improve on and it's easier to identify those areas with help and definitely way easier to fix them too. If you don't take care of yourself, you risk your mind and body hitting the fast forward button on you. Long story short, Disney has finally opened the vault for good. So it's time for you to take a Scrooge McDuck dive into the wealth of options available to you to keep you going strong mentally, physically, and spiritually for decades to come. You may not be able to rewind the clock, but you can certainly be kind to yourself. Just as a heads up, we are announcing an opening registration for a brand new event this coming weekend. We have always wanted to do an evening race and we finally got our wish. So save the date for Saturday, August 14th at Bond Park to enjoy a sunset run amongst the fireflies and the trails you love. More details are coming soon. As always, if you have any questions about today's topic or have suggestions for any topics you would like to hear in the future, please drop a comment below or shoot me an email at info at fitenable.net. And as always, thank you for racing with Fit and Able. Happy Upsy Daisy Day! Upsy Daisy Day is an opportunity to reset, re-energize, and reap the rewards of a great day. Your bed is about the coziest thing you can think of ever being in. Trust me, I know. I've got a fleece comforter on the top of a foam mattress with performance tech sheets. Getting up and getting going can be a challenge, but with a fresh attitude and a positive outlook on the day, it can make getting up a whole lot easier. A great attitude gets you off to a smooth start with none of the grumble and drag that normally accompanies your mornings. We all have those days where we wake up with dread rather than joy. When I was in law school, I had whole semesters of them. Each morning after a long night of studying, the alarm would go off and the first words out of my mouth were, Oh, fudge. Only I didn't say fudge. The rest of the day would usually follow the way I started it, but that was my fault. Upsy Daisy Day is, is your reminder to greet the day bright and cheerful and be an upsy daisy. So to celebrate this day, you just need to assume that everything is going to go your way. Sure, you're going to have some bumps on the way, but when they happen, you'll just shrug them off and take a moment to appreciate how little those little setbacks really matter. Just think of it like getting a rock in your shoe. Don't let it stop you in your tracks. Just take it out and keep going on your way. For one, that little rock certainly isn't thinking about you after you move on, so why pay it any more mind than it takes to flick it away? Plus, that little rock may not have meant to get in your shoe in the first place. Live and let live, turn the other cheek, or whatever it takes to put that smile back on your face, and try to light up that little rock's day instead. But that's not all. A bright attitude also makes hard tasks easier. 
It makes things that were once difficult and seemingly impossible become a breeze to manage. It really is all in how you treat the day, and treating it as a glorious, amazing gift rather than a burden you have to make it through is a great start. Celebrating Upsy Daisy Day starts when you first wake up rather than grumbling about waking up. Take a chance to be cheerful and bright. As the famous Zig Ziglar said, your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. So, let go of whatever is holding you down and fly high today. I can assure you the view will be spectacular. If you have any questions about today's topic or have suggestions for any topics you'd like to hear about in the future, please drop a comment below or shoot an email at info at fitenable.net. And as always, thank you for racing with Fit and Able. Happy Rosé Day! I'm doing a dry June challenge, so I won't be celebrating this one with you, but Rosé Wine Day is the perfect excuse to not only enjoy a glass of your favorite wine, but to unite with others to enjoy it with. I don't have much to say on Rosé itself, but I can't say enough about the value of gathering friends and family to enjoy each other's company. Whether it's a family gathering around the dinner table, or some buddies drawing up to play cards, or many generations of fans tailgating before a big game, we all benefit from being together in so many ways. This is doubly true after being kept apart so much over the past year. There's a saying from who knows where that if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. Wherever you started, you know you got to where you are today with many other people at your side, and you were there as helping them on their journey too. And at many places along the way, you likely paused to toast each other's success and friendship with your favorite drink. The quality of the relationships we have will take our lives from good to great. So, if sometime after watching this you're hanging out with friends and loved ones who enrich your life, whether you're drinking rosé or not, please take a group selfie and drop it below. A picture gets better the more smiles that are in it. Plus, it's pretty hot out these days, so it's uh, probably appropriate to have frosé if you prefer that. If you have any questions about today's topic or the suggestions for topics you may like to hear in the future, please drop a comment below or shoot us an email at info at fitenable.net. As always, thank you for racing with Fit and Able. Happy Ballpoint Pen Day! Of all the things we are surrounded by, who would have thought the humble and ubiquitous ballpoint pen would have its own day? Well, it just goes to show that the little things we take for granted today were a big deal to someone at some point. A quick little history lesson. In June of 1943, the brothers Laszlo and Georgi Bureau became owners of U.S. Patent 2390636, better known around the world as the ballpoint pen. Ballpoint pen day is a time to appreciate this rarest of things, a design classic that is accessible to everyone. Although they, although they were once a revolutionary little invention, to put ease of use and quick drying ink in the palm of your hand and replace the not much older fountain pen, today ballpoint pens come in an incredible array of options. Not only can you get them in all colors of ink, but you can find pens in any style that perfectly fits your particular grip, has the size point you desire, and you can get them in boxes of 20 for $5 or a single pen in an inlaid wood case for several hundred. Simply put, there is a pen for everyone, and you will be hard-pressed to find another way to express yourself that so perfectly fits you. If nothing else, it's something to chew on while you hack out your next email on your keyboard. And that's the lesson for today. You have the tools at hand, to, so take some time to express yourself. So much of what we offer of, of ourselves to others is limited to tweets, texts, and TikToks. Emojis only exist to help make these media less cold and emotionless and dumb. We all know how little they convey relative to a good conversation face to face, and we all, all have just had a year in lessons of how awkward even face to face conversations can, can be when they're on screens. If you can't talk to in person, then the next best thing is to actually write out your message. There's something about writing things out by hand, and this has been studied, that, all, that allows us to put much more of ourselves and our intentions into a handwritten message. There's also great value in writing things out just for our, ourselves. It helps us get things we keep bottled up inside out in front of us so we can look at them differently. If you're into journaling, take a few minutes every day or once a week to put your thoughts on paper so that you can look back on them in the future to reflect on your journey. If you're having troubles with someone or something in your life, then write out a letter to them that you'll never send. 
Say everything you want to say without repercussion and then throw that letter away and move on. You'll be surprised how well that works. If you're feeling lost in the direction you want to take in life or your career or your relationships, then write them all down. Written goals are much more likely to be achieved and seeing them in front of you lets you think about them in a more objective way. You can then post them where you'll see them every day and you can share them with others to help keep you accountable. Putting things on paper gets it out of your head. It can help you move from confusion to clarity and you can do this with nothing more than a piece of paper and a ballpoint pen. Just as a heads up, letter writing day is September 1st. So why don't you pick up a pen and start writing notes to your friends or loved ones? Following hugs and handshakes, there are a few more effective means for making connections with others than sending handwritten notes. And in our digital age, they are increasingly rare. After so long apart, sending notes is a great way to reconnect with those we haven't seen in a long time and to begin to renew those bonds. Here's a challenge for you. Write one note per week to someone who is important in your life. It doesn't matter whether it's a different person each week or you start a weekly exchange with one person. All you need to do is show someone that they are worth the five minutes it, it took to sit down and write out a quick note, letting them know that you are thinking of them. A year from now, I think you'll, you will be amazed with the bounty of relationships you cultivated for yourself with the humble ballpoint pen. Anyway, if you have any questions about today's topic or have suggestions for future topics you'd like to talk, talk about, drop a comment below or shoot us an email at info at fitenable.net. As always, thank you for racing with Fit and Able. Happy Yarn Bombing Day, and a happy Friday too. You're just hours away from the weekend, but don't let that distract you from finishing out the week strong so you don't have to think about what's waiting for you on Monday. Anyway, we have a fun one for you today, and you're probably going to need to Google this to see what I'm talking about. Yes, it's been a long time waiting, but it's finally Yarn Bombing Day, a day when fiber freaks from around the world go on a knitting rampage to embrace the world in warm, fuzzy comfort. Some call it guerrilla knitting or others yarn storming. No matter what you call it, it is simply the practice of adding knitted works of art to public places to show how knitting can add meaning and color to urban locations. It's neither graffiti or vandalism. There aren't any gangs of grannies going around marking their territory. It's simply a celebration of this tradition, raising awareness of the art of crochet and knitting while also having a lot of fun in the process. There's no limit to how much beauty and creativity you can share with the world. I'm sure at one point or another we have all engaged some kind of crafting hobby, whether when it was when we were kids or more recently with our, your own kids or just things we enjoy doing with friends or in the quiet hours of our evenings. These hobbies do a lot to stimulate us mentally, provide great opportunities to learn new skills, and as we observe today, allow us to share the beautiful and interesting things we create with the world to brighten it up just that much more. If you knit, crochet, sew, cross stitch, or craft, and have some beautiful work that you would like to show off, please drop a comment with a pic of your creation below. We'd love to see what cool or comfy things you have made. If you have any questions about today's topic or have suggestions for future topics, please drop a comment below or shoot us an email at info at fitenable.net. And as always, thank you for racing with Fit and Able. Happy Superman Day! Yep, today is the day to celebrate the Man of Steel. As a goody two-shoes, he has never personally been a favorite character of mine, but there's still plenty to look up to with the globally recognized icon of truth, justice, and the American way. In case you didn't know, Superman was first created in 1933 by Joe Shuster and Jerry Siegel and was originally, and surprisingly, a villain. But all that was swept under the rug and his good guy career started in Action Comics No. 1, published on April 18th, 1938, and he got his own comic in 1939. But this isn't a comics history lesson. You don't need to be Superman, Clark Kent, or Henry Cavill to be a force for good in the world. In fact, we are surrounded by people who can't jump over buildings, don't play catch with bullets, and prefer wearing their underwear inside their pants. They are heroes who create meaningful change around them by doing little things for others and the community each and every day. You don't need superpowers to do that. And it's rarely mentioned, but those common everyday heroes don't have city-destroying arch nemeses, which is nice too. So, while you're out and about today, don't be weird. Leave your cape at home, but say a kind word. Give a high five or lend a helping hand. 
It will make you feel absolutely jacked with warm and fuzzies, and maybe you too will make someone swoon and say, my hero. Anyway, that's our Saturday short for this weekend, so I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope you have a great weekend. If you have any questions about today's topic or have suggestions for future videos, please drop us a comment below or shoot us an email at info at fitenable.net. And as always, thank you for racing with Fit and Able.